So, um, how am I doing on time? What time is it? Party time! But what time is it? 5.44. 5.45. Oh, good! Wait, oh, what? I only have two left. Three left. Is that okay? Is that good? Is three left good? Should I start cutting shit? Three left is fine? Yeah, good, good, good. Thank you. You don't have to be for him, but... The belated birthday, babe. The belated birthday, babe. sparkling and generous introduction, letting you know that I have um, a degree in classics from NYU. If anyone is curious about what you do with a degree in classics, it's this. <laughs> or going to more debt, and if you're a real overachiever like me, both. <laughs> um, no, I've actually been chiseling away at my debt lately, yeah. about to tell you about like my repayment plan. Like that means stuff. <laughs> if you're interested, ask me later. I'll add it to my little cue card. I only filled out the one time. Anyway, so yeah, I studied classics. James is also um, a classically trained musician, a composer, you know us. Yeah, did a good amount of time with Gregorian chant. Yeah, I got to learn the hurdy-gurdy today. <laughs> that was a total surprise on the cruise here. Shout out to Ellen. <laughs> When you first told me that, I was like, is that a new sexual position? With a... <laughs> I got the hurdy-gurdy. <laughs> Helen hit me with the old hurdy-gurdy. Girl, Helen's wild. <laughs> um, yeah, no, but we're both classically trained. We both put this together. We're going to do this little interpretation of um, the oldest written piece of European music that we have found. Um, uh, they say that it's the oldest written piece of music, but I'm like, classicists are real good about, like, if it doesn't happen in Europe, it doesn't count! So I'm, it's, the, it's the oldest in Europe that we found, and it's called the Seculos Epitaph. And it was written um, in the first uh, century BC, in Ephesus, and they found it um, engraved on this stone that they think was um, his wife's gravestone. He wrote this here, and it actually has musical notation that we can like both have lyrics and music and kind of represent confidently about 2,000 years later. And um, it was written in Greek, in Koine, Koine Greek, and um, so we did. And then I decided, I, I don't know, part of why I love classics so much is sort of placing myself in this context of human history that isn't so in the hyper-present moment. And it's actually like, we've, we've been at this a while. <laughs> We've been doing this for a minute, and I guess I find that comforting in a way that, that we are just one little sliver. And as much as there, it, it, it is the end. It is the end of now, and then there will be something else after. And I find some small solace in that, and um, in that sort of spirit of carrying forward this legacy of the human tradition. We took the Greek, translated the Greek into Latin, translated Latin into Italian, translated the Italian into English. So you're going to have to hear and not know what the fuck it's saying for a long while, but then we'll say it in English at the end. But it's wild to me that this is what this dude was singing about 2,000 years ago. Oh, so on this spot. 
identity is this Italian peninsula. And um, then actually some of these worshippers of this ancient uh, earth goddess Kibele, who was attended to by uh, these priests who were born as men, who would castrate themselves and live as women in service to this goddess, um, sort of a proto trans transcestor, if you will. Uh, sort of started to evolve into this culture that's still around in Italy today, particularly around Naples, in Campania, um, called the Feminelli. And um, it's, it's different, it's the same, and I actually just went to the Candelora uh, a few weeks ago, which is this religious festival for the Feminelli to sort of beckon in spring and um, usher out winter and um, continue to shine. <laughs> Finché I am a rock icon, but I like translating it as like, I'm a rock icon. 